Hello, Divine and God Ministries family. How are you all doing tonight? I hope you all have had a great day this great Tuesday. Welcome to all my um, YouTube watchers that will watch it once the video is uploaded. Uploaded. So I thank you all for coming on. I thank you all for supporting me. I am the Reverend Edwina Perrin, founder of Divine and God Ministries. This ministry is actually five years old this month. So I celebrate a five-year anniversary. Five years, five years this ministry was birthed ago. Hey, Kim, how are you? I hope you've had a great day. I hope you've had a great day um, as people are jumping on. Hey, Ronaldo, how are you? Hey, cuz, how are you doing? Um, again, I appreciate you all coming on. I appreciate you all coming on. Thank you so much for joining. Um, tonight, I have had a great day. It's been a great day, beautiful day. I don't know whether it's winter or not. Hey, Vanessa, how are you? I don't know if it's winter or spring. It's cold. It was a little chilly today. So I am excited to who all are jumping on. I can't see who everybody that's jumping on. Like it's showing me people, but then I can't see their names. So, hey, Ochoco, I'm messing up your name. Ochoco, how are you doing today? I got to say it slow. How are you doing today? I hope you all have had a great day. Y'all know how we do. Use the hashtag. There is a word. Hashtag there is a word. Tag four friends. Invite four friends. We welcome you all on here. There is a word tonight. Now, this is not going to be a shouting word. This is going to be a teaching word. Hey, Yashika, how are you? This is going to be a teaching word tonight. You need your journals. If you need a pen or um, a notebook, you really need your journals tonight to write, write down some um, things um, tonight, some scriptures to go back and study because this topic that I'm going to discuss tonight, um, many of us have asked this question. We all have had this question before. So as you know, this is Tuesday Talks. Um, again, use the hashtag, there's a word. And for those that will catch on the YouTube, I thank you for subscribing to the YouTube page. Just want to give shout outs to all of you all. It is not me, but this is God. This is all God. So I love you all. And you know how we do? We're going to start in prayer, start in prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you right now, Lord God. Thank you for allowing us to see another day. Thank you for just being you. Thank you for just waking us up this morning. And thank you for keeping our heads of protection throughout the day. Now, God, as we get into this word, I ask that you remove Edwina out the way, God, and pour in the oil for your anointed vessel to give the words, to share the word, Lord God. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And the people of God said, amen, 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 amen. Hashtag, there's a word, y'all know. Invite somebody, don't be what? Don't be stingy with this word. Don't be stingy with this word. Hey, Viva, how are you? Don't be stingy with this word. All right, so you know, with TC Talks, if you have a topic that you would like for us to discuss, not just me, us to discuss, inbox me on Divine and God Ministry, and um, I will research and pray and study over the word. So I received the word that someone wanted to um, discuss, and I'm going to read it off my phone um, because I want to make sure I share this because we've all had this question. And as you know, for privacy purposes, I do not disclose the name. So we um, we will use uh, anonymous names. So I'm going to call this person Paige. Tonight, Paige, we're going to read something that Paige shared. Um, many of us have had this before. Um, if it allowed me to pull it up because I am on this um, and if not, I do, I can remember what it is. All right, so it's not going to let me pull it up. Maybe because I'm live right now. See, these things, technology is so funny. It's not going to let me, okay, I don't think it's going to let me pull it up. But anyway, so here's the question. I can remember what they asked. Paige sent a question. She says, after all this transformation, 
you've talked about transformation. You've talked about um, how we should be transforming in our life and not transition. And I do all of this. She said, the problem I struggle with is I'm doing the right thing, but then, hey, Mia, how are you? But then I seem to still have challenges. And Paige listed, um, hey, Stephanie, how are you? And Paige listed some things. She said, I'm paying my tithes. I'm taking care of my grandson. I mind my own business. I ain't in everybody's business. And she said, I attend church. I attend Sunday school. But she said, yet I seem like I am fighting against the world. It seems as if I am having challenges. It seems as if I'm always going through trials and tribulation. Okay. Give me some likes. Show me some likes if you've ever had that question. So let me break you break down what Paige is asking. Because some of us don't want to admit that we've asked this question. God, I'm paying my tithes, but I'm still having financial challenges. God, I am working for the kingdom. I am doing things. And it seems like these people over here who don't go to church, who don't worship God, that's always, um, they outside washing a car, or they always somewhere cussing, fussing, or always in the midst of people's business, but they seem to be prospering. If you've ever felt like that, let me see some amens, or let me see your hand raised, put an emoji, because we've all been there, and if you have not been there, give it a minute, you will get there when you feel like you're doing everything, and it seems like you are following God's plan, but it just seems like you're overwhelmed. Or you're dealing with fear and anxiety while these people over here cussing, fussing, and they get to go to sleep at night, but you over here having anxiety attacks and don't know why you have an anxiety attacks, but they over there acting a monkey in the neighborhood or somewhere shooting up the neighborhood, and they can go home and sleep. Lord have mercy. Now y'all know, Paige is not the only one that has had these questions. Paige is not the only one that has did this. So let's talk about this. Get your journals, cause I'm not gonna have time to go through this entire chapter. But we gotta go to Habakkuk 1. Habakkuk 1, find Habakkuk, that's in the Old Testament. Habakkuk 1, we're, we're gonna go there. We're gonna go to Habakkuk 1. And we're going to read this. And I'm going to go to verse 2. Now, how many of you ever have been paying your tithes and you still up on a, seem like you're up on a financial attack? But I'm going to take you somewhere and we're going to shift your talking. We're going to shift your language. We're going to shift your mindset. Because when I was studying this, this blew me away. Okay, Habakkuk 1. Let's go here. Habakkuk is complaining to God. I want you to go to verse two. He says, how long, Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not say, Lord, have mercy. That's basically what Paige has asked this question. How many of you have been minding your own business and you got Messy Marshall and Messy Mark has put your name in something and you were nowhere to be found you were nowhere in this. Hey, Felicia. Hey, Amber. How are you? Listen, how many of us have you ever dealt with Nancy Marshall? Always got something going on. Always somewhere um, in just in people business. Now, here we go. Habakkuk 2. 1 and 2. I'm going to read it again. How long, Lord, must I call for your help, but do not listen or cry out to you for violence? Listen. So here we go. The first thing that we have to realize that they are not getting away with anything. It may look in your carnal mind. It may look in your flesh, in your fleshly eyes, because you're not looking. They are not getting away. Let me just tell you this. It does not happen on our time. The problem we struggle with is we want God to get them in. They, we want them to get God in. I'm just going to say it like that. We want them to get got right then. 
But guess what? God does not work on our own time. Here we go. I got to take you to the word. Write this scripture down because I'm going to read this scripture to you. I'm going to take you to the word. Write this down. Romans 8 and 28. We like to shout this word, but we don't like to live this word. Okay, ouch, that hurts some toes. We like to shout this word, but we don't like to live this word. Watch this. Romans 8 and 28. Somebody put this in here. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been, who have been called according to his purpose. Check this out. Don't you realize that when you paying your tithes and you feel like you're still in financial challenges, God is just strengthening your faith? Do you not realize when Nessie Marshall and Nessie Mark got your name in your mouth, then that means you important. I had to learn this the hard way. I don't, you know what? I don't care who talk about me because you know what it says and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who loved him, who have been called according to his purpose. Let me tell you something. You can talk about me. You can scandalize my name. You can do whatever you want to do. But at the end of the day, God's plan will prevail. That's what we have to keep our focus on. I used to focus on people talking about me. Let's go here. I'm going to go here. I used to focus on people and be like, oh, they why why nobody is not following my lives? Why nobody looking at my lives? And I'm gonna give you some a transparent moment. You know what God said? Why are you worried about them focusing on you? Because your word you delivering is for me. They should be focusing on me. Check me. That check me. Here's the thing. Okay, so I told you this ain't gonna be no shouting, it's gonna be a teaching. God checked me. And you know, I like to use myself for an example because I don't want y'all to think I got it all together. God says they should be looking at you anyway. They should be focusing on me. They should be focusing on my word. They should be getting the glory. He said, why are you getting in your feelings about who liking and who, can, who following you in your ministry? He said, in my time, in my time, okay, Here's the problem. Edwina had a problem with God's time. Jesus Christ. The problem is sometimes when it looked like the other people are doing better, it's because we too busy focus on them when we need to be focusing on God. I'm just going to go there. That is not just for y'all. That is for me. So here's Habakkuk. He says, why do you make, why do you make me look injustice? Lord have mercy. Verse three. So Habakkuk is like, why do you, you know, why do you make it look like, you know, why I'm looking like, you know, I'm not doing something right. And then he says, why do you tolerate wrongdoing? God never tolerates wrongdoing. Okay, let's go here. God never tolerates wrongdoing. It may look like he tolerates wrongdoing. Trust and believe. God can handle people far better than we can. You know, it used to take years for God to deal with you. Now, I have seen people that God, that they have, you know, put their mouth on other people and God has dealt with them quick, fast, in a hurry. We just got to get out the way. So let me go here. I'm going to go here tonight. Sometimes we look at people that got the big house, the fancy car. They look like they got all this money and we think they blessed. Okay, let's go here. Lord have mercy. Y'all, I'm trying not to preach this. Here we go. Everything that people have don't always come from God. Let's just get this clear. Everything that people have obtained is not always from God. Everything is not a blessing. Jesus Christ. Lord have mercy. <laughs> look, here's the problem. Sometimes we look at tangible things and think they are blessings. We'll look at somebody that got the five bedroom house, the two Mercedes, uh, the five Louis Vuitton purses, and we'll think they got it going on. Okay, let's go here. If they ain't paying no, paying no tithes, let me just tell you this. 
Just know in God's time, they will fall. They will lose what they're having because God is not going to continue to bless you when you can't be obedient to him and give back to what he has given. He asked us for 10%. He asked for us 10%. And some of us, we look at other people and thinking they got it all together. They don't, mm -mm. don't look at that. Quit looking at that. Quit looking at what people have. Hey, Latasha. Hey, Carolyn. Hey, Keisha. Quit looking at what people have. Everything they got, everything is not always a blessing. Okay, let's go there. You got to remember, sometimes, <laughs> I'm going to go over here. Sometimes people put themselves in predicaments and you don't be in the inside of their house. They might be on max out every credit card. They may have every own, every advance. Well, you can't do that, but you know, they may have those advanced loans. I, 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 you, look, let me just, let me just go here. They may be robbing Peter to pay Paul. You, they living from paycheck to paycheck and you thinking that you're behind. No, you're not behind. You far better than they are. Cause guess what? You get to sleep at night cause you ain't trying to pay all them bills. I tell y'all all the time. Quit keeping up with the Jones, the Smiths, and the Jacksons because just two days prior, their debit card got denied at Walmart. Don't compare yourself to what somebody else has, okay? And don't think that God is blessing them. Everything people get, look, look, mm -mm. That's not, that's, that, that, that don't come from God. You know good and well, God did not uh, uh, allow you to have what you have you may look like you're struggling, and I'm going to go here. Sometimes the reason why some of us struggling because we give too much volume to the word we're struggling. You're not struggling. You're just having financial, uh, at that moment, you're having a financial check. You just can't go buy what you want to buy. Let's get this. Quit using the word broke and quit using the word struggling over your finances. Okay? Let's go here. We tend to see, okay, this is Habakkuk. And I want y'all to read this whole chapter. We'll think that how they can go around here and drink all this alcohol, eat, eat any and everything, and they they don't have hypertension or don't have um, diabetes or, or they're not dealing with something. Why? Why? Well, let, let's go here. It may not be affecting them right then. We don't always know what's going on eternal, internal in their body. Again, let me tell you what the main thing is. God told Habakkuk, you got to quit focusing on them because I'm going to get you to the verse when he told them. See, we, we focus on too much. Been there, done that. I've been there, done that. I can, I can share that. Y'all know I like to be transparent to, to make it a te um, uh, teaching moment. That's right, Latasha. Everything that's glitter isn't gold. That's right. Just because they look like they're healthy on the outside, don't mean they healthy. They they just want they just refuse to go to the doctor to find out. I tell you what, I've seen people that drunk so much, you be thinking like, oh God, they ain't never sick. Oh, uh, guess what? Let them stop drinking that alcohol, they die because it's been in their system so long they can't even quit drinking. So, but let me tell you what we gotta stop. So here we go. Go to verse five. Here's the Lord answering Habakkuk. He said, Look at the nations and watch and be utterly amazed for i am going to do something in your days that you would not believe even if even if you were told so you got these chaldeans that's what it was these chaldeans in that chapter they were so wicked and they were wicked walking around boasting about what they have lord have mercy let me go here have you ever seen them people that every time you turn around they boasting on what they got, child, I got this, and child, I got that, and 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 child, I got this. Let me let me talk about me, cause y'all can talk about me. I remember when I was attending USC Aiken, people talked about me because I was going to a small school. Why are you going to that small school? Is it even ranked? Da 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 da. Some of the very people that talked about me went on to these big old schools, and I'm, I'm not going to name names, went to these big old schools and not failed, but flunked out. Guess what? I graduated. I have moved on with my career. I'm a dissertation from, away from being a doctorate. And you think I'm going to worry about what somebody else say because I didn't go to this big prestigious school 
or choose this prestigious school, that's what's wrong. We too busy living for other folks when we need to live for ourselves. Quit worrying about what other people doing. Quit worrying about what, what the Jones have down the street. Don't focus on it. Yes, Keisha, comparison robs you of your blessings. You will miss your blessings. And we've all been guilty of this question. We thank God, why, why? No, I've had to check myself on this too. I've had to check myself with this. Let's go here. And, 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 and Habakkuk, he goes on and God tells him, uh, let me, basically what God said, I got this. Quit trying to be in my business. Let's go here. How many times do we try to be in God's business? How many times do we interfere with God's business and set us back? Um, we set ourselves back. We set ourselves back with our blessings because we interfere. Okay, show me some hands or some thumbs that you've interfered because you felt like God went moving quick enough. Mm -hmm. and, and when we, we, we think he's moving quick enough and we get upset. And then we try to handle the problem ourselves. So here, it, he says, this, so that was Habakkuk's first complaint. The second complaint, he says, Lord, you're not from everlasting. You are not from everlasting. My God, my Holy One, you will never die. You, Lord, have appointed them to execute judgment. You, my rock, have ordained them to punish. See, Habakkuk was complaining that the Chaldeans were punishing them. It was like, God, you allowing them to punish us. They wicked. They running around here doing things and, and causing trouble and chaos. And I'm minding my own business. I'm minding my own business while they doing this. And so God tells Habakkuk, I, I got this. I got this. But, you know, Habakkuk, he, he still was going on. And then he goes on to verse um, 15. Oh, no, let's go back. He goes to verse 13. He says, your eyes are too pure to look on evil. You cannot tolerate wrongdoing. Why then do you tolerate the treacherous? Why are you silent? Okay, that's why I named this. Why is God silent? Why are you silent while the wicked swallow up the more righteous than themselves? Lord, have mercy. So here we go. Habakkuk, he was like, you're not doing anything. He was, he was appalled that God was just standing by allowing them to just destroy their nation, okay? He was just appalled by them. But watch this. Let's go here, because here's going to shout part right here. The shout part is when they get to verse, the verse 20. Somebody go to verse 20. Here we go. Go to verse 20. Verse, is it 20? No, go back. Um, It's that verse 20. Oh, God, where is it? I see it's in my notes. Hold on. Because I want you, this is the shouting part right here. Um, It's not verse 20. Okay, I'll find it. Anyway, he tells him, he says, look, this is not for you to handle. This is for me. I know. Go on to Habakkuk 2. He said, you got all these complaints. Let's look at this. Go to verse Habakkuk chapter 2 and go to 2 and 2. Y'all, we quote the scripture, but we really don't know what this scripture means. It says, the Lord, Habakkuk 2 and 2, the Lord replied, write down the revelation, make it plain on tablets so the herald may run with it. Lord, have mercy. Check this out. Instead of us focusing on what the, the people doing, um, what they doing, and and their evil doing and it seemed like they're prospering we got to write it down basically what god told habakkuk go write go pray and go meditate lord have mercy here's the problem sometimes we focus so much on the wrong on the wrong of what people are doing or the evil doing that people are doing that we forget to pray i told y'all this ain't gonna be no shouting this is a teaching night we have to start praying we got to pray and we got to seek god's face matthew 6 33 but seek ye first in the kingdom of god somebody put that in the comment screen because i'm about to end this and i'm about to take it on watch this don't feel like you are suffering 
The Bible tells us it rains on the just as well as the unjust. That's word. That is just word. Here we go. The thing we got to do is stop focusing on what other people have and focus on what we have. Where they might have a bunch of stuff and always going on trips, you got peace at mind. Perhaps they always going on a trip because they can't sit still. Have you ever seen them people that just can't sit still? They always gone and every time you turn around, they on a ship, on a cruise. Well, perhaps they might be running from you. They might be running from the law. You don't even know that. Lord have mercy. Perhaps they might be on the run. Don't get it twisted. Don't get it twisted. Everybody that's on vacation ain't always on vacation. They 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 at the house because they don't want you to um they don't want the police to catch them. Okay, so let's go there. Here's the other thing. Watch this. I'm gonna give you some witnesses. So go back and study Job. Oh Jesus, here we go. I, I'm gonna take you home on this. You may be in between blessings. Go read Job, the book of Job. I preached this one time at my church. Watch this. Yes, it looks like you are paying your tithes and things aren't going. Yes, it looks like you are always in the doctor's office. Yes, it looks like that. But you might be in between blessings. And by you being in between blessings, check this out. Job lost everything. Go to Job 1 and 16. He lost everything. He lost everything. A fire from God, the fire of God fell down from heaven, burned up his sheep and his service and consumed them all. Go read it. Check this out. You might be in between blessings. Don't focus on that. Just because God is solid does not mean he is not blessing you. Here we go. Watch this. Just because, and I need to make this clear, just because you are being persecuted, don't mean that God is not close to you. Watch this. I'm going to give you something. Paul was close to God. Somebody cut Paul's head off. Watch this. Joseph was close to God, but he, he got kidnapped and was thrown in a pit. Watch this. Moses was close to God, got exiled to the desert. Desert. Watch this. Moses didn't even get to see the promised land. He led him to the promised land, but he didn't get to go over there. Check this out. Stephen was close to God and was mob, was mob, a mob stoned him to death. They stoned Stephen to death. But watch this. I got an even better for you. Watch this. Christ was close to God and it was the Lord's will to crush him. Good God from Zion. So if Christ was close to God, who did not sin, had no sin, did no wrongdoing, what do you think? And, and he got crushed. What make you think that we are not going to suffer and go through things too? Lord, have mercy. I'm trying to, Lord, I have gotten hot up in here. I'm trying to hold myself. When I studied Habakkuk and God started revealing to me, well, think about this person and think about this and think about that and think about this and think about that. I was like, oh my God. But the, the, but the ultimate person, the ultimate person was Jesus. Christ was close to God, and it was the Lord's will to crush him. Guess what? He crushed him so he could die for our sins. He died, but guess what? He didn't stay there. He got up with all power in his hand. My point to this, don't be so quick to think that you are suffering. I know Paige is not the only one that have ever asked these questions. Don't think this. I just read Romans 8 and 28. All things, all things, it, let me tell you, it's going to work out for your good. It is going to, and we know that in all things, God works for, for the good of those who love him, who have been a call, who have been called according to his purpose. Just know that your storm, your storm it's not always for you. Your storm is an example that somebody else needs. You can't have a testimony without a test. Lord have mercy. You can't go through mess and not have a message. Jesus Christ. Please understand 
We have got to stop comparing ourselves to what other people have. We got to stop comparing what tangible things, materialistic things. There's a song, Jesus, Jesus. Have y'all ever heard that? Jesus. Um, and it said, kings and kingdoms will all fade away. But there's something about that name of Jesus. Lord have mercy. I could care less about this materialistic thing. I could care less. I could care less. Let me tell you something. I like nice things. I, I thank God that he blesses me to get up to get nice things. But guess what? Kings and kingdoms, with all this stuff going to pass away. You can have five Louis Vuitton bags. You can have two Mercedes. You can have a five-bedroom house. But if your attitude nasty, you ain't no better than I am. Lord have mercy. Look, let me tell you something. That stuff going to fade away. And, and watch this. You have to be careful. Be careful, because everybody that, you know, some people credit so overstended trying to keep up with everybody else. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to keep pumping my money to Nike. I always tell my son, don't, don't to, I always tell my son, dress like you own the company. Lord have mercy. I'm coming to a point in my life, I am in such a transformation that I am to the point like, you know what, Dwayne, you don't need that. Why are you getting that? Don't buy that. Why? Make that yourself. Create that. Find a business. I believe in finding small business. Nike is already a billionaire. Why do we keep making them rich? Okay, so here we go. You know, I'm going to step on some toes. You know how you got those people that every time the new cell phone come out, why are you buying that cell phone to just be going in a financial cycle? Just because there's somebody else got the new Apple. They already rich. They are filthy rich. They are wealthy. And we are going around here in the new phone. Oh, this new phone came out. I got to get it. And then we'll go to these companies and they'll say, oh, you don't have to pay today. But then they're financing the phone. I learned that trick about five years ago. I told him, I'm not financing this phone. I will get a phone if I need a phone, but I'm not going to get the phone. You know what? My heart desire is to uh, go by the Samsung Galaxy 10. Why? The Note. My, my 8 Note worked just fine. So, here is the thing. We are going to go through to something. Paige had a, a, a great question. Paige, I'm sure Paige is not the only only person that has this. And we need to understand, God blesses people because he chooses to bless people. There is somebody out there looking and wish they had what you had. Somebody looking at the peace, they wish they had your peace. Somebody looking and wishing they had your joy. Somebody looking to, and they wish they had your family unit. They wish they could be a family. Somebody somewhere, you know what, let me tell you something. You know what? I know people they like, well, I didn't get to go on vacation. I, I didn't get to go in, in vacation, and, and they always going on vacation. Guess what? Some people looking at you, and they wish they could have a family picnic with their family. It's not all the way about that. And let me go here. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Let me go here. Quit looking at folks on Facebook. Lord, have me. I can put anything on Facebook to make it look like this. I, you know what? I used to be like, oh my God, there's such a happy couple. They look good on there. I've come to learn that some of that stuff, that is nothing but um, Photoshop. And they, they, they just faking it. They faking it, putting it on, on, on Facebook. Like they got it going, you know. Yeah. And then they can't stand each other. Lord have mercy. Y'all, Lord, Jesus Christ. Look, here's the thing. Quit looking at Instagram. Quit looking at all this social media, thinking that, oh, they got it together. Oh, honey, look, let me tell you something. I've come to learn, too. Be careful of that because some people that are posting all about their marriages and all that, that's just for you to see the, a facade. It's a mask. It ain't true. They don't believe everything you see on social media. Mm-mm. Don't. i give you a prime example. Um... My sister-in-law, was. Uh, she saw my son on a picture, and she just glanced the picture, and she thought he had an earring in his nose, and we burst out the laughing, and she said, do you see how people could just start a lie? She was like, I was getting ready to call you and say he got an earring in his nose, but what she didn't realize, she didn't look at the picture. Listen to what I'm saying. She didn't look at the picture clear enough. Lord have mercy. That's a word. Some of us are not looking at these pictures on Facebook clear enough. We're not looking at Twitter, clear enough. We're not looking on Instagram, we ain't looking at them clear enough. 
because it wasn't an earring in his nose. He has a birthmark. He has a mole on his nose. My point is, how many times have you looked at a picture and you thought you saw one thing, but it and, and you come to find out it was another? Look, let me tell you something here. I'm gonna give you another scripture. Somebody put this in the in the, in the um in the comment screen. The gospel, the, the gospel implies that we are not none of us are worthy of the blessings. It's just it's called grace and mercy. None of us are worthy of the blessings that God gives us. It's called grace and mercy. Here we go. You know, I like to give y'all scripture. Go back and study Romans 3, 10 through 12. Somebody put that in the comment screen. Romans 3, 10 through 12. And then put Isaiah 64 and 6. Isaiah 64 and 6. We're not worthy of any blessings. We're not. He don't have to bless us. We do. We Some of us so jacked up. Some of us got so many things. You know what? If it wasn't for grace and mercy, the twins, some of us, Lord have mercy. Hey, AJ, how are you doing? It, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of us so jacked up. We got so much going on. If it wasn't for the twins, grace and mercy, Lord have mercy. And I'm telling you, be thankful for where you are. I know it may look like they are prospering, but go back and read Habakkuk 1. Go back and read the rest of that. Go back and read the rest of that. And, and think about all those people that I shared. Paul. Look at Paul. Paul got beheaded. Joseph. Joseph got thrown in the pit by his own family, his own tribe. Look at Moses. Moses led him to the promised land, but Moses never got over there. So he, Moses did what all, dealt with all them hard-headed folks. All them hard-headed folks. He dealt with all them hard, let me tell you something. He dealt with all those hard-headed folks. All right, then you got Stephen. Stephen was stoned to death. And then we got the beloved Christ. Christ was crushed for our sins. Lord have mercy. And what make you think? We, he suffered on the cross. He suffered on the cross for us. And you think we're not going to suffer? Hashtag, there's a word. Look. Don't miss out on what God has for you. Don't miss out on what God has for you. You know what? I at one time I was like, oh God, I'm just want a husband. I'm like, when are you gonna give me a husband? And you know what? I started looking at some people. I'm like, you know what? I might be better all by myself. Yeesha, Lord, Lord have mercy. I started looking at some of the things. You know what? I can come to my house. I don't have to answer to nobody. I ain't sneaking no bag in from Dillard's if I go buy something. I ain't sneaking no bag in from Cato if I'm about something. I ain't sneaking and buying no furniture. and got to tell the furniture people, but you can't bring it because he'll be at home. He don't know I bought it. I don't have to do all of that. And God checked me. He was like, quit, quit being um so envious. Quit being so envious of other people. Yeah. Quit. Don't miss your blessing. You know what? Some of my friends have already completed their doctorate, and I'm still trying to write this dissertation. I can't look at them. You know what? When I graduate, nobody's going to ask me, how long did it take? They're going to just say, Dr. Perry, and you think I'm worried about it? They finished in five years. I'm on an eight-year plan. I, you know what? I Don't bother me. It really does not bother me. I'm just saying. I, I, you know what? None of y'all gonna say how long it took you. Y'all gonna be like, congratulations. When I turn that tassel and get hooded, y'all ain't gonna be asking me how long it took. If anything, y'all might want to ask me, do we need to take up a collection so we can pay pay them back? That's what y'all gonna be saying. So just be home. When you get a chance, study Habakkuk. Study Habakkuk. Go back and study that whole chapter because we quote that scripture and write vision and make it plain. And he said for the appointed time, we, when you go to Habakkuk 2, going back and, and start at one and read the entire book of Habakkuk. But go back and read through Job. Job 1 to 42, he was in between blessings. And at the end of Job, guess what? He blessed him double for his trouble. Lord have mercy. So don't think you Whatever you're going through or, or the fact of other people are being blessed, don't focus on that. 
See, the enemy gets you there. That's where the enemy will get you. Focus on what other folks have. I told y'all about focusing on what other people have. Don't don't mm -mm. don't do that. Don't do that. I had a, a, you know what? I had a dear friend. Loved her to death. Loved her to death. Loved her to death. And I was like, oh my God. You know, every time I turned around, she was buying stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, this girl, one day we went to Chick-fil-A. And when I tell you her debit card was denied, not declined because she put in the wrong code, but it was denied. That taught me a lesson. I'm thinking like, you know, all these nails and getting these nails done and all these purses and all these new cars. And, you know, I'm like, oh, she got to go. No, she didn't. Oh, look, let me. I'm trying to stop. Let me go here for my single parent. Single parent, quit, quit worrying about what other people have. I'm a single parent. Listen, God will bless you. Don't, don't, don't try to keep up with those people. Don't try to keep up with married people. You don't have married people income. You got single parent income. And let me just tell you, your single people, single parent income sometimes is more than the married people income. Don't do that. Don't put that weight on you. Don't put that weight on you trying to keep up with people. Because it will kill you. It will stress you. And at the end of the day, guess who we got to meet? We got to meet our maker. And when I get there, I want him to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I don't want him to turn me around and be like, no, nah, you was too busy worried about this. You didn't even, you didn't, weren't even appreciative of what I have given you. So I know Paige was not the only one that asked this question. For those that are just jumping on, go back to the beginning. Paige asked the question, why does it seem like they're suffering? Like, you know, there are other people, they just doing all kind of evil things, but they keep prospering. And so we talked about it. Habakkuk had the same question. Habakkuk thought, felt like God was silent. And God was not silent. He just had to do it on his time. And that's the problem. A lot of times, we want God to do it on our time. It is not our time. It's God's time. And when God handle it, he'll handle it. Trust and believe. Oh, wow. I love you all. Thank you. I will go back. I will go back and read through this. It, that's right, Adrian. All that matter is how you finish. That's it. How you finish. Not what somebody else. Mm -mm. Child, no. Mm -mm. Y'all stop that. Quit worrying yourself about that. I stop. I stop that. I was like, I, I can't do this. I can't be worried about what other people have. But anyway, for those that are watching live and those that are catching the replay, those that are catching me on YouTube, if you're on here, subscribe to my YouTube, Divine God Ministries. Go to my YouTube because you can catch the other um, videos that are posted on there. Um, go to Divine God Ministries, the YouTube page, and go there. Um, don't let a spirit of comparison come over you. Pray that spirit away. Get that spirit out your system, honey. Take a spiritual laxative and get that out. Y'all know how we end. Y'all know. Hashtag, there is a word. Share this video. Don't be stingy because I'm sure somebody else got the same question. This was no shout tonight. It was a teaching. We all needed this. But anyway, I love you all, so let's close out in prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you right now. Thank you, God, for your word. God, we thank you that whatever question we have now, it was already in the Bible. It took place back in the Bible. So, God, we thank you that we can study your word to find the answers, God. We thank you that we can open up your word with freedom and study. So, God, right now, we remove the spirit of comparison. We, we remove the spirit of envious. We remove the spirit of coveting. We remove the spirit of needing validation. We remove the spirit of needing approval. We, re we remove the spirit, Lord God of buying things that we can't afford in the name of Jesus, God. We apply the blood. God, we need you to pour out a spirit of self-confidence. We need you to pour out a spirit of self-efficacy that our self-esteem is high. In the name of Jesus, God. God, go to every household that has been on this line, God. God, we dismantle and destroy any spirit that causes us to compare ourselves to our neighbor, Lord God. We remove it in the name of Jesus, God. God, we command and we declare, we decree 
that everybody on this live will live for you and only you, Lord God, that they will not be living for Tommy, Rick, Joe, Martha, or anybody else, but they will be living for God, the sovereign one, God, the savior, Lord God, the one that we will meet, Lord God, because when you crack the sky, we want to be caught up, Lord God, and we want to hear those words. Well done, thy good and faithful servant. Lord, have mercy. God, so right now, Lord God, detox us from anything that we will compare ourselves, Lord God. Detox anything that we will need affirmations from anybody, God. Detox anything that we will need validation from anybody, Lord God. Detox anything that will cause us to feel like we are not worthy, God. God, because you created us. And in your word, in Genesis, everything you created is good, Lord God. God, we thank you right now, Lord God. God, we thank you in the name of Jesus, Lord God. You said in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Lord God, we don't want for anything, Lord God. And God, we ask that you give us patience. Patience for the blessings in the name of Jesus, God. And God, we ask that you dismantle the spirit of impulsivity, that we got to get it right then and right there without prayer, Lord God. So God, continue to just humble us, Lord God. Continue to orchestrate our minds that we will pray before we even purchase it, Lord God. God, put a prayer before the purchase. I don't care if it's anything from a shirt to buying a car, Lord God, from buying a house, Lord God. God, that we will pray and seek your guidance before we even purchase it, Lord God. Because, God, everything that comes to us is not always a blessing from you. God, because if it's a blessing from you, we won't struggle. We won't worry about how we're going to make no payments, Lord God. And, God, right now in the name of Jesus, God, I declare income in and in, come in income over everybody's finances in the name of Jesus right now, God. God, I declare peace over everybody's mind. I declare joy right now, Lord God. God, I declare love, Lord God, amongst family members, Lord God. So, God, we thank you in the name of Jesus right now, Lord God. God, I hear you clearly, Lord God. Stop being so impulsive to buy things in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, give us patience right now. God, patience to seek your face, Lord God. Patience to seek your word in the name of Jesus, Lord God. God, and we will not be in debt for our, the rest of our lives because we've been impatient getting out the side of your wheel in the name of Jesus, God. So, God, we give you glory and honor. We give you glory and honor in the name of Jesus. And God, it's too much of this. Time out of this. Time out for going to bed struggling and, and, and worrying about how we're going to pay our bills because we've always extended our debt in the name of Jesus, God. So God, right now in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you glory and honor, Lord God. God, we give you glory and honor right now, Lord God. I declare peace over minds in the name of Jesus, God. God, and, and our ministry don't have to look like somebody else's, Lord God. God, that we will operate in the ministry that you have given to us. And God, we thank you right now. We thank you right now, Lord God. Oh, God, we thank you right now as we transform through this. So, God, we thank you. We are transforming, not transition, because we're not bringing this mess over. We're transforming. We're renewing our minds to seek you. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Lord, have mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Lord God, thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Listen, share this with somebody because I'm sure somebody else has these questions. They feel like they are always struggling or they feel like God is just silent. Share this. Share this with somebody. This is, it's, this is not a shouting word. This is this was this was a teaching night for all of us. So I just want you to share share this word in the name of Jesus. Share this. Share this. Somebody is dealing with this. It's not about me getting likes. I could care less about the likes. But if somebody needs this word, they are looking at other people, wondering how they are making it, and I, they need to focus on God. They don't need to be distracted because you can be distracted and miss your destiny. Let me get off here before I start that preaching. Don't get so distracted that you miss your destiny. 
don't get so distracted by what other folks have because you and you miss your destiny. Lord God, thank you, Jesus. Don't get so distracted that you miss your dis your destiny. Ooh, Lord Jesus. Okay, I gotta get off here because I, I will end up preaching again. I, I, I will end up preaching. I will end up preaching. Don't get so distracted that you miss your destiny. Oh, have mercy. Don't get distracted and miss your destiny. All right, I got to go because I, I will continue to preach. All right, I love y'all. Have a great night. Again, those that are catching the replay, I'm the Reverend Edwina Perry. And those that are catching the YouTube, the, 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 the replay on YouTube, thank you for subscribing. Go and subscribe to the YouTube. Go to my blog. My blog is www.divinninggodministries.com www.divinninggodministries.com. Go there, go there. So love you all. Y'all have a great night.